All right, this is section 8.4, areas of composite figures. And uh, there's a map here of the United States. And if you notice, this map is put on this uh, grid paper here. And we're told that um, each of these squares, um, well, let's see, we, we can look at the key down here, and actually this distance here from zero to 500, um, we're only wanting just a chunk of this. So each of these squares is about 50 miles. I know that because there's 10 of these guys um, in there. And so if each square is 50 miles, then 50 times 50 would equal 2,500. And so each of these little squares is 2,500 square miles. And so if I asked you to find the area of one of these states, I want you to think about which ones would be the easiest ones to do. So you're probably looking at states over here in the uh, western part of the United States, maybe Colorado or Wyoming. Um, and the reason is probably because these states are very um, rectangular. Um, even New Mexico, um, Nevada, it has straight edges there as well. And then there's a lot of states over here like Florida, for example, where it's kind of all over the place. And so um, you could still count, but it wouldn't just be it wouldn't be as easy to count. And so these states are kind of representative of what we're going to be talking today, talking about today, which is composite figures, which are uh, figures that are made up from other shapes. Also gives you kind of some perspective if I zoom out here, it kind of gives you some perspective of just how big Alaska is. Um, I know that a lot of the maps we look at, we see Alaska's up kind of off to the side, and but it is a huge, huge chunk of land. It's actually our biggest state in the United States um, with land mass, but one of the more least populated states that we have as well. So let's look at a few other composite shapes um, that are put on grid paper like this. Now these grids, these squares, are one by one squares. So in our previous sections when we were doing perimeter, we were counting um, how far it was to travel around the shape, right? So we had uh, each of these distances being one, and then we had our diagonal distances of one and a half, one and a half, and one and a half. So every diagonal was one and a half. But that's for perimeter. That's not what we're actually going to be doing today. Today we're looking at the area. So we're actually counting the squares inside. So these little squares that are little half squares right here, we're going to count them as half squares. Uh, not, we're not going to count them as one, and as one and a half because I'm not talking about the distance that I'm coloring in purple there. I'm literally just talking about how much space is inside the square. So it's half a square. So for a shape like this, it might be actually easier to split it into other shapes. Again, composite shapes are just shapes that are made of other ones. And if I draw a few lines here, um, I can split this shape into a rectangle, um, a square, and then two triangles. Now the area of the rectangle is going to be, let's see, that's four wide and eight long. So there's going to be 32 squares right there. That's where multiplication kind of comes in handy. And then this square is going to have nine squares in it because it's three by three. The two triangles, I could either use my triangle formula, which by the way is one half uh, the base times the height, or I could just literally count the squares inside. So we know that this is a full square, and then that's half, and a half plus a half is going to make one whole. So there's two squares there. And then one, two, three, and then two halves makes four, and then another half. So there's four and a half squares there. So if I add all these up, I've got 32 squares plus 9 squares plus 2 more squares plus 4 and a half squares. And so 32 plus 2 is 34 um, plus 9 is 43 plus 4 and a half is going to give us 47.5 and this would just be units squared. And then similarly for this example B, if I just draw a line that goes like this and maybe like this, I can split this into a square that is 2 by 2, so it has 4. Um, a rectangle that's 3 by, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's going to be 18 squares there. And then this triangle. So I think it's actually going to be easier to use our triangle formula for this one. Um, the base of the triangle is 5. The height of the triangle we know is 6, and so 6 times 5 is 30, 
and 30 divided by 2, because remember a triangle has that half involved in it, is 15. And you can count them if you want, but there should be 15 squares, including all the halves right there. In fact, it'd be kind of difficult to count them because these, diag these little chunks right here aren't perfect. So for example, that's not a half a square right there. Um, that's not a perfect half a square either. So we kind of have to use the triangle formula for this one. So if I add up 18 plus 4 plus 15, that would give us 37 units squared. So to find the area of a composite figure like these, what I'm really doing is just I'm combining the areas of the shapes that I already know. Rectangles, squares, uh, triangles, um, that kind of that sort of thing. And then of course we're going to have circles come into play as well. All right, let's look at this composite figure. This is a uh, portion of a basketball court. And so it consists of, it looks like a circle and a rectangle, um, but it's actually a semicircle in a rectangle because if I do the rectangle, which I would prefer, right? The rectangle formula is really easy for the area. Um, I don't want to include this chunk twice. So that's actually going to get included as part of the rectangle, which means this is just a rectangle with a semicircle attached to it. And to find the area of a rectangle, I just do base, which is 19 and the height, which is 12. So we're just doing 19 times 12, um, which is 228. So we have an area of 228 for our rectangle part. Now for our semicircle, and we looked at semicircles in our last section, um, we're gonna use the area formula, which is pi r squared, but we're just gonna do half of that. So I need the radius, and since I know this is 12, from the other side of this rectangle, that makes the radius, which is just halfway through, that's gonna make the radius six. And so to find the area, I'm going to do pi times six squared, but I'm gonna divide my answer by two because it's only a semicircle. So six squared is 36 times pi is 113.04, but then I'm gonna divide my answer by two, and that's gonna give me 56.52. And then so we are going to add those two areas together to get the combined area. So the red plus the purple here, right? It's my circle plus rectangle. So 56 plus 52 plus 228 is going to give us a combined area of 284.52, and that's going to be feet squared. Remember, we use square units for area. So this is all we're really doing today. We're just doing area of composite shapes. We're combining rectangles with semicircles and triangles with semicircles, and we're just gonna combine and add up their areas. All right, the next one is uh, made up of, this next composite figure is made up of three shapes here. It's got a triangle, it's got a rectangle, and it's got a parallelogram. Um, so if you need to revert back to my other notes because I've got all the formulas in there and examples of how to do that. But for the, I'll start with the rectangle, that seems to be the easy part. The length of, or the base of the rectangle is 8 there, and then the height is 4.5. And so 8 times 4.5 is going to give us an area of 36. And then for my parallelogram, a parallelogram actually has the same exact formula, base times height. Um, my base is going to be 8, and then my height is going to be 6.7 because the height always meets the base at a right angle. So 8 times 6.7 is actually going to give me 53.6. And then for my triangle, um, the formula is base times height divided by 2, or 1 half base times height. So the base is 11.2. And then the height is 4.5. So yeah, there's some decimals involved, but we're going to use our calculator and it'll be fine. So 11.2 times 4.5, and then we're going to divide our answer by 2, is going to give us 25.2. And I'm just going to add that area with the area of the rectangle up here, 36, with the 53.6. And that's going to give me 114.8 centimeters squared. For example, B, this one's got uh, only two shapes. Um, it's got a uh, rectangle that's 9 by 7. So 9 times 7 is just 63. 
And then it's got a triangle. And I know it kind of looks like two triangles, but this is just the height of the triangle. Um, so we're just gonna use that as our height. And then our base is going to be nine because it's the other side of our rectangle. And so for a triangle, I'm just gonna do half of the base times the height, which instead of doing um, half of nine first, I could do half of six first. Half of six is three, and then three times nine is 27. So if I add 63 and 27 together, so add the 63 with that, we're gonna get 90 meters squared. In example C, we've got, looks like a square here um, that we are gonna find the area of, because of, it's on the inside, with four semicircles. So to find the area of that square, I would just do two times two, which is four, and then I have four, four semicircles. So four semicircles is gonna make two full circles. So I'm gonna use my circle formula, but then I'm gonna multiply by two. So my circle formula is pi r squared, but I've got two of these guys. So I'm gonna multiply that whole thing by two. I got one full circle, and then I've got another full circle, and so that's two. So the radius um, actually only goes halfway through, so I need to know what this distance is that goes halfway through the circle, and since the diameter is two, that's gonna make the radius one. So we're gonna do two times pi r, which is one, squared. One squared is just one, and if I go ahead and multiply that by two, that would give me two times pi, and two times pi is gonna give me 6.28. So I've got an area of four from the square, and then I've got an area of 6.28 from all four of my semicircles, which we just said makes two full circles, which is why there's a two right here in front. And so if I add those together, if I add that with the four that I already had, that's gonna give me 10.28 feet squared for my final answer. Just adding those areas together. Now example D over here, has a rectangle and a triangle and a trapezoid. We'll do the rectangle first. The rectangle is nine by five and that's gonna make it 45 for base times height, nine times five. For the triangle, the base is four. We know this chunk of it is four. Um, and then the height is actually given to us right here, it's five. So we're gonna do one half times four times five. Half of four is two, and two times five is 10. So the area of the triangle is 10. So 10, and then 45, and then my trapezoid. My trapezoid formula is one half, base one plus base two, so you take the area of the, or combine the, the two bases together, times the height. So one half times nine times, or plus, 6.4, those are my two bases. I'm gonna add those together first. And then my height is also going to be this five right there. So if I add my two bases together, which they're in parentheses, so I have to do that first, nine plus 6.4 is 15.4. And then I'm going to multiply that by five and I'm going to divide it by two because that's what the half is gonna have me do. And I can do all those steps at one time in my calculator. And that's gonna give me 38.5 for the trapezoid. So it's very similar to a triangle, but instead of having one base and doing um, one half base times height for a triangle, I do one half bases times the height. So I add those two bases together first before I times by the height and then divide by two. So if I add those all together, 38.5 plus 45 plus 10, that's gonna give me 93.5 inches squared, because it's area. Okay, so a lot of your homework problems are just gonna look like these, where you've gotta combine the areas of these different shapes. And then you're gonna see a couple homework problems that look like this. Now, your immediate reaction might be to see if I can draw a line here and make a trapezoid with a rectangle and a trapezoid, and, and that's possible. You could do that. You have one, 
two, three shapes right there, but it would be very difficult to find all the necessary side lengths in order to find those three areas. So instead, if you have a problem like this where there's a chunk missing, like this triangular chunk is just missing, I'm going to treat it like it's a full-sized rectangle, and then just instead of adding, I'm going to subtract out the triangle part that I don't want. So I'll show you what I mean by that. If this full-sized rectangle was there, well, it would be 13 for the base and 8 for the height. And if you multiply 13 times 8, that gives you 104. So we know the area of the full rectangle would be 104. But we're missing a part, right? We're missing the triangular part. So now I'm going to find the area of the triangle. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of uh, critical thinking here. If I know this is 13, and that's 4, and that's 4, I have to think what's missing. So 13 minus 4 minus 4, that means this is going to be 5. And so I'm going to take away, subtract, the area of my triangle, which is 1 half times the base of my triangle times the height of my triangle, which is 6. So instead of doing half of 5, let me do half of 6 first. Half of 6 is 3, and 3 times 5 would give you 15. So the answer to this one is not as complicated as it looks. I don't need to split it into a bunch of different shapes. I instead just need to think, think of it as one full shape minus out that triangular part. So 104 minus 15 is just 89 meters squared. So um, that's pretty much uh, it for the, the lesson. We're just doing a bunch of different areas. We're adding them, or in some cases, maybe subtracting them um, away to find the area of our composite figures. But I wanted to do number 16 from the homework before I left you guys. Number 16 says, the fountain is made up of two semicircles and a quarter circle. Find the perimeter and the area of the fountain. Round, your, round the perimeter to the nearest tenth of a foot and round the area to the nearest square foot. Okay, so why don't we start with perimeter first? That's what we did first chronologically. Why don't we do perimeter? Um, I've got two semicircles that have a diameter of 20. And I know that two half circles makes a full circle. So for the perimeter, that's what I'm going to do first. I would then do pi times diameter because that's my circumference formula pi times diameter. I am not going to divide it by 2 because I have two full circles, and or two half circles, which makes a full circle. So I'm going to use pi times 20, and pi times 20 is 62.8 feet. Now, for the quarter circle part, a quarter circle means one-fourth of a circle. So if I literally were to continue this, you might see that might be the actual size of this circle, right? So you can see it's about one-quarter of it. Um, so if it's a quarter of a circle, that means it's one-fourth of a circle. And so the center of the circle would be right there, making 20, not the diameter, but 20 would now be the radius of that quarter circle. So I need to find the diameter because I want to use my circumference formula, pi times diameter. And so if the radius is 20 times that by 2, the diameter would be 40. So I'm going to do pi times 40. That's pi times 40 because I'm finding the distance. Now, I don't want that distance all the way around the circle, though. I only want a fourth of that. So if a semicircle is half, a quarter of a circle is just fourth, a fourth of it. So I'm going to do a fourth of that just because I only want that section right there. And so a fourth is just dividing by 4. 40 divided by 4 is 10. And 10 times pi is 31.4 feet. So I'm just going to add those together, the 62.8 that I have right here, with the 31.4. And that's going to give us a perimeter, a combined perimeter of 94, whoops, 94.2 feet.
So that's our perimeter. Now we're gonna switch gears to area. So I'm going to get rid of this. You noticed I was only outlining the outside of the circle because perimeter is outside. So now I'll be talking about the space inside of the circle because that's what area is, is the space inside. So let's start with the semicircles again. Two semicircles is going to make a full circle. So I'm gonna do area on this side. And my area formula is pi r squared, switching formulas here. But I'm not going to do 1 half pi r squared because I have two of these halves, and that makes a full. Now, we said in the last uh, problem we looked at that, that 20 was the diameter, but I only want the radius. So the radius is going to be 10. So pi times 10 squared. 10 times 10 is 100. Remember, squaring a number does not mean multiplying by 2. 10 times 10 is 100, and 100 times pi is 314. And so then I have to do this quarter circle right here. And so remember, I have the quarter circle. It's just one-fourth of a circle. The 20 is actually the radius of our quarter circle. So I don't want that 10 anymore. I want that 20, which it tells me is the distance from here to here. So it's the radius. So I'm going to do pi times 20 squared. But that would be a full circle, and I don't want that full green circle. I just want one-fourth of it. So I'm going to put a fourth in there, just like I did the last time over on this side for circumference. So 20 squared is 20 times 20, which is 400. And then one-fourth of 400 is just 100. So I'm doing 100 times pi, just like here when I did 100 times pi. So I'm going to get 314 again. So I'm going to add those areas together, just so happens a coincidence that they're the same. The 314 is the combined area of my two semicircle parts, which I'll color red here. And then the other 314 is the area of the quarter circle that I have here. And so together, they will make, if I add them together, I'll get 628, and I'm going to label feet squared. So my two answers for this problem, I've circled in yellow. And I'll even highlight them for you. For the perimeter, we said it was 94.2 feet. And then for the area of those, we said it was 628 feet squared.